right? Because this is where it starts to get interesting. So, heads up. What do all of these have in common, all the following? Gastroparesis and IBS, dysphagia, difficulty with speech, sleep disorders, GERD, low gallbladder ejection fractions, liver enzymes are off, bradycardia, tachycardia palpitations, insulin resistance, a decrease in immune system as we talked about, an increase in inflammation, drastic increase, and the HPA axis going wild. One thing can control all of those. Any ideas? Okay, I have to keep hands here. Um, does that give you any ideas? <laughs> Just kidding. Love PowerPoint. Okay, that's my internal jugular vein. And now, thanks to Dr. Hickey, is a slice from my fMRI. The blue arrow points to the internal jugular vein. The red arrow points to the slightly more normal side. That's big. Okay, that's too big. That's a big honking one is what that is. Now, the yellow arrows point to the internal carotid artery. There is a nerve that is in sheath, in the carotid sheath, with those two structures that is involved. Here's a drawing to kind of make it clear. You can see the IJV here. And now imagine it getting very large and slightly increased pressure. There's the internal carotid artery, which the pressure is much higher. It's going to push right back, right? What is going to take the hit is the vagus nerve. And again, they're in sheath together in the carotid sheath. So vagus nerve compression. Whoa. Um, here's a beautiful sonogram showing the um, common carotid artery in the IJV. The white arrow points to the uh, vagus nerve. That really got me thinking. Um, the vagus nerve, as you know, is the parasympathetic nerve system pathway, basically. It's the cholinergic anti-inflammatory pathway. So when that is not functioning well, we get more inflammation. We get more inflammatory cytokines. It's mainly afferent fibers. So uh, it communicates with the organs to the brain both ways, but definitely from the organs to the brain, it tells the brain the state of the organs and that can communicate back. If that communication is lost, we can lose quite a bit of proper organ function. Now, there's an, it's also considered to be the interface between the brain and the immune system. Now this I found amazing because the macrophages which come in for example in MS and help clean up or what we believed to clean up the um, mess of, of broken myelin etc well when they are not under control of the vagus nerve if that vagus nerve is compressed all the rules change the the macrophages actually release tumor necrosis factor the big daddy inflammatory cytokine um, and there is one spot on the macrophages that the vagus nerve controls. It's called the peripheral alpha-7 subunit containing nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. Okay. And that prevents that release of TNF in a normal healthy patient, but not if the vagus nerve is involved. So this, of course, since the parasymp parasympathetic sy nervous system now is not working as well, the sympathetic nervous system is overriding everything. And what that does is dumps into our bodies all these catecholamines, uh, norepinephrine especially for us, um, epinephrine, and what do those do? They drastically increase inflammation and the output of inflammatory cytokines. Here we go again.